Welcome back to AugZoom Instant Insight Series, where we're exploring behavior and project. In this episode, I wanted to talk about project reconstruction. You may remember in the previous episode, we took a challenge and we broke it down into its component parts and then prioritized which of those parts we could work on to have the biggest impact. That was the project deconstruction or the first four steps in this whole process. The second part of this is the reconstruction. The output of the deconstruction are a set of actions that will achieve the desired outcomes for the challenge. These actions were in the format of co-created projects worth doing. That is a verb, an adjective, a noun, and an outcome all linked. So a verb, an action word, an adjective, a describing word, a noun, the thing that you're taking that action on, and linked to some sort of outcome. So for example, engage new stakeholders, verb, adjective, noun, to secure support, which is an outcome. So if we engage new stakeholders, we will get their support. You can see that the action on the thing is linked to the desired outcome that you're looking for. In the project reconstruction, we take all of these actions that have been prioritized and cluster them into themes. By putting them into themes, we can combine them into either projects or parts of projects. And if we have many projects, we could have a program of related projects. When we cluster them into themes, and I'll show you an example of this in a moment, we then prioritize those actions that achieve the best possible timing and impact based on the resources that we have. So step five, clustering and prioritizing the actions. And then the final step in the reconstruction is to build these actions into an implementable plan so that you can take that plan to whoever the stakeholders or the project owner is and present that as a proposal for them to buy into. So let's have a quick walk through a real example. We used co-created projects worth doing to build a reconstruction around a challenge. In the deconstruction, there were a lot of ideas, a set of actions that were built that could be taken in order to enable people to get food during the COVID social distancing. So once all of these actions are written down, and you'll notice verb, action, adjective, noun and outcome. Once they've all built, they then cluster them into themes. So they can say, well, these actions are things that a retailer could do. Those actions are some sort of logistics partner uh, could take care of. But then there's some things that consumers, shoppers can do as well to, to make this happen. Combining them into themes gives you actionable bites of things, and some of these will become projects. So, for example, the two sets of activity on the right can be built into a project, one around a delivery service and the second around safer shopping practices. But there's also another project that retailers can also do, and they take a series of actions. And when they do these things, you get some synergies happening in the other areas as well. So what that looks like in Miro, we did the last video around the deconstruction. We're now talking about steps five and six. So five and six, to take a closer look at those, we prioritize and sort the actions in order to be implemented. So we take these series of actions, we say when they're going to happen and how and the timing, what can happen in parallel and what needs to happen in series, that is one after the other. You can see it starts to look like a Gantt chart already. We then take those actions and build them into a time frame that actually makes sense and can be delivered with the resources that you've got. That is the plan which gets proposed to the stakeholders in order to secure support to take the next steps. Thank you.